it's a hero with a will cast of iron. From United Label Games and Odd Bug Studios comes a furry and ferocious adventure. In the tradition of Mouse Guard, Secret of Nim, and Redwall, with the gameplay styling of Salt and Sanctuary, this is Tales of Iron. A 2D dungeon crawler putting you in the role of Red Key, Crown Prince of the Rat Kingdom, on his quest to defeat the invading Frog Empire. After the death of the king, you're placed with the responsibility of driving out the frogs, ancient enemies who have despoiled the land, killed its people, and thrown everything into chaos. Over the course of the adventure, you'll travel to many varied locations. In truth, far more than I expected. From forests to mines and poison-infested tunnels, as well as other locations, best left secret. All but narrated by the Witcher himself, Doug Cook. He's going to show all of them what he was made of. If nothing else, this would be no easy win for Dennis. The world is fleshed out through the quests, being narrated by a single outside observer putting you into the heads of the characters since none of them actually speak any human language. And it hints at some mysterious background story that we never quite get the whole story on. My one gripe is that it creates this world and history that begs to be explored more, but that we only ever get glimpses of. Each of the weapons that you find while exploring have different styles and links to some possible legend of past heroes of the kingdom. Item descriptions, like in Dark Souls, would really have helped. As it stands, a lot of the story is implied rather than overtly stated. This 2D side-scrolling adventure had you battling foes of many varied sizes, from tiny bugs to some huge multi-phase bosses, armed with a whole catalog of weaponry from tiny blades, two-handed axes, bows, and of course your trusty shield. And you're most certainly going to need your shield, since while this plays like lots of other 2D action games from recent years with a Todd roll, it's one that seemingly doesn't grant any frames of invincibility. None that I've been able to notice. There's a large focus on parrying, with enemies telegraphing their attacks for you to knock them off balance with. It can be a bit hectic, with the multiple enemies all going in for their hits, as well as the times when you have an ally with you, making it difficult to see who and when to counter. That's most certainly when you should be rolling out of there, since the roll seems to be more for positioning than dodging. Combat is frustrating at times, with plenty of cheap hits and some bosses capable of getting you trapped in positions where you're forced to simply take the hit and hope you have enough health to survive or get away and take your heals. But getting a well-timed counter and hearing the satisfying squelch of your spear or crunch of a hammer down on the skull of an enemy all make up for it. The combat is great, but since the only thing you really gain from fights are currency or health, and your wallet is relatively small, you'll find yourself running past fights later on just to get to places. But the glory of beating bosses make it all worth getting into the good fights. The dark gothic storybook aesthetic mixed with cute rats, bugs, and not so cute enemies really draws you in, and the music playing all over it is as varied as the environment. Each place having its own music, allowing you to really tell where you are just by the sound of water dripping, steam hissing, or the songs playing in the background. Honestly, the music in this game is just really standout, from atmospheric gothic to the pumping trance and techno. Final Verdict, Tales of Iron is a fun, if sometimes frustrating adventure, well worth your time. It's available on PC and most consoles, and I really recommend you trying it out. This is Kekka's Boy, and I'll see you later. Bye bye Thanks for watching the video I hope you enjoyed the video though Press subscribe so you're notified When I upload again